I can't get caught up in like, hey, I could have gone and opened four mixed retails three years ago and been a millionaire by now. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to get caught up in that. I want to play by the rules. I want to be here for a long time. That's Austin Healy. He's part owner of Peak Vapor, a specialty vape shop in Riverton. And while he's playing by the rules on where his shop should be located, there are a number of other businesses in question. Mike and the KSL investigators went undercover. And Mike, it appears some of these businesses may have found a loophole in the law. Yeah, David, let's be upfront here. One of the primary reasons for that law is to keep vape products out of sight and out of the hands of kids. That's why Austin's vape shop is not allowed to build near a school, a park, church, or a neighborhood. So, why are dozens of vape shops getting the green light? Well, we went undercover to find out. Shop after shop. How's it going? Uh, just looking for juice. Hmm, strawberry, apple, peach. All right, let's do that. And counter to counter. Can I try your guys' Exodus? For the last few weeks, the KSL investigators have carefully been using the company credit card and spending money on something the bosses typically... Let's do the snow cone one. Oh, yeah. Well, let's just say they're going to have a few questions. Just understand, there's a very good reason we're buying a 12-ounce can of... Yes. Well, that's Coke Classic alongside a 60-milliliter vape bottle of Strawberry Melon Twist. And the reason has everything to do with this tiny piece of paper. You know, tell you what, we'll get to that in a moment. First off, here's a girl you should know. Her name is Katie Bertram, 19 years old, straight-A yeah. student, awesome athlete, daughter of KSL News Radio's Debbie Dejanovic, and on this particular night... I had an eight-month addiction to She's got the undivided attention of many in an so auditorium... for young kids to get addicted to without even any telltale signs of it. A room full of parents, lawmakers, health officials, and fellow teens telling the story of her addiction to vaping. Did you get addicted pretty quickly? Yes, it was a quick addiction to the point where the cost didn't matter, nothing mattered. I needed it on me 24-7. Katie and her addiction became a statistic. In Utah, roughly 20% of teens vape. If you're under 19, the law says it's illegal. The CDC says it's not safe. And Katie says teens are surrounded by it. You're just around it all the time. It's kind of marketed to everybody who walks in there. Now, when Katie says it's marketed to everyone who walks in there, She's talking about mixed retail stores. That's a store selling food, drinks, clothing, merchandise, whatever, you name it. And if they so choose, they can sell vape products. But here's the catch. If more than 35% of their sales are tobacco products, they have to be licensed as a specialty shop. And if you want to know why that's such a big deal, it's all about the distance in relation to the kids. The rules are it has to be more than 600 feet. Specialty vape or tobacco shops have zoning requirements, keeping them at least 600 feet from homes and 1,000 feet from schools, churches, parks, and playgrounds. Heck, kids under 19 can't even walk into a specialty shop. Put the thing back down and we'll keep moving. But mixed retail stores are exempt from that law, meaning they can pop up just about anywhere. And at the entrance of this school, 921 feet. We don't want kids walking by this and seeing this every day. State Representative Jen Daly Provo, who says his zoning laws for specialty shops creates a physical and a psychological barrier between children and tobacco products. But there is a problem. She believes dozens of specialty tobacco and vaping businesses are falsely claiming to be mixed stores and setting up shop wherever they want. And so these stores are flying under the radar. They're skirting around some important zoning laws that we've determined are critical. So to see if some of these stores are in fact skirting the law, the KSL investigators took our undercover cameras into nine different mixed retail shops in Salt Lake County. That is everything. In each store, we walked to the counter, paid for a bottle of vape juice, and hold on a sec. A quick flashback here. Remember that tiny piece of paper we showed you just a couple of moments ago? Yeah, well, the Coke Classic is fully documented on the receipt. The 60 milliliter vape bottle, a strawberry melon twist, has been changed to custom item. And what you're looking at appears to be the norm on just about every one of our receipts. So it doesn't come up as the vape juice? Instead of showing we purchased vape juice, it rings up as gift item, custom item, miscellaneous, glass. Heck, one time it was even blank, showing nothing at all. Do you have an itemized um, I type deal? I can write it for you. Okay. For some reason it doesn't come out. What we found was even though each shop had a different story... Why is that? Uh, just the way our system is... Um recognizing some d uh, different um, prices. Every receipt was vaguely the same. The exception, 
be in this shop in Midvale trying to explain a $14 rubber band so the, we never purchased. So the band is 14 bucks and the juice is only six? Not, not in reality. It's just the way our system has to like split it up so that we know how many of the vape bands we're getting rid of so that we can order the, like the right amount next time. Again, I never asked for that vape band she's talking about, but on the receipt, it's listed as a branded accessory for 14 bucks. The Aqua Surge vape juice costing me only six. That's well below market value. Seems weird, right? Hey, lady at the counter, do you think it's weird? It's weird. Yeah, that's what I thought. Doesn't make sense, huh? Doesn't make any sense, but that's the way our system has to do it. That's the way they did it. And so For nearly three minutes, she attempted to explain the receipt. And while I may never understand it, there may be a reason for that. But a majority of your business is probably the vapes, right? Mm, the vape right? juice, yeah. Okay. And so it's just kind of like, I think that the owners wanted to do it that way so it looks better. Okay. That's just what they told me to explain is like, when you add those two together, that's what the juice comes Okay, anyways. so the less you know, the better. Yeah. It's that group of stores that we have this challenge with. Gary Edwards is executive director of the Salt Lake County Health Department and in charge of making sure these stores are in compliance. But he says those vague receipts are tough to track, making it nearly impossible to know if they are following the law. Would you call that a loophole? I would call it a loophole, yes. Turns out that loophole could be allowing one shop here we are 19 feet to operate just feet away from these apartments and a nearby school. There you go, 540 feet away from a preschool. A loophole, maybe letting another sell near two churches, a school, and these homes. A loophole that might make it okay for a vape shop to operate near a church and homes in every single direction. We are 250 feet to the west, also residential. K-163 okay, feet to the east, again residential. And if we keep moving, unless that loophole is tightened up, the fear is... And I was completely addicted, very quickly. More and more kids and teens like Katie will be exposed, become addicted, and eventually suffer the health effects of vaping. Salt Lake County Health Department says there are roughly 600 tobacco retailers in the county. The ones believed to be skirting the law make up 5 to 6 percent, which is roughly about 30 or so. The health department is working with lawmakers to close the loophole in the next session, hoping to make receipts specific. And if vape or vapor is actually in the name of the business, it must follow the laws of a specialty vape shop. Sounds like a couple things they could address there. Hope you kept your receipts. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we do. I'll be turning those in tomorrow. But yeah, come uh, the session uh, January, February, they hope to tighten some of that stuff up. And it looks like they may have a good chance of doing so. So we'll see. Right.